Welcome to this short overview of how we can use Simufact Additive to simulate the 3D printing of a part. Um, the part we're going to look at, you might remember if you've seen my previous video on Apex Generative Design, was this um, shelf bracket that we designed. So we used the new Apex Generative to come up with this very organic, uh, unmachinable, uncastable part, but one that would be 3D printable. So we want to look at this and try and determine is it going to be printable to a, a satisfactory quality. So just close that down and we look at Simufact Additive. So I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to leave it with the name project. Uh, and it takes us through with a little wizard to begin with. So the first thing we do is we select the machine we're going to use. Um, and I'm just going to do a mechanical simulation here. Um, and this uses a material model that builds in the thermomechanical effects into a simple mechanical model. It's an approximation, but it's a pretty good approximation. And it gives us a reasonable comparison between uh, printing at different orientations. So I accept that. And I'll work my way through these menus here. So first thing I need to do is import a part. And I'm going to take the STL file that I'd previously exported from Apex Generative. So it brings up the part here. I'm going to use the positioning to automatically center it within the, uh, the machine. And it gives me a warning. Um, and this warning is basically that the part as imported is uh, interfering with, it's, it's occupying the same volume as the base plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit the positioning on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it about the X direction 90 degrees so that it's there laying in that orientation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it in the global Z. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is move it um, down so you can see that that's still penetrating. And what I want to do is move it up um, a few units. So I will do that. So it's there, it's about touching, and I go one, two, three, four, five further up, like that. So now the part is, is, uh, is in position in the tank. The next thing I need to do is generate my supports. So I can come in here and I can just generate support structures for the part. There's a lot of parameters that you can play around with, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to hit the button to generate supports. And this analyzes the, the shape of the part and looks at um, areas that would be unsupported while printing and automatically creates um, solid representations of that, that part of the, of the, um, the process. So it takes a minute or so to do that. So we will pause and resume when it's ready. OK, so it's finished building support structures. We have uh, 37 unique support structures plus the base plate in here. And they're colour coded so that you can see uh, which one's going where and what part of the original structure it's supporting. The next step down is to look at material properties. So there are 745 materials um, provided with the software that come from um, material suppliers and machine manufacturers. So I go in and pick a general steel. Once all of these parts are white, I can move onward to the manufacturing and optimization. I just click save there. Um, so support removal is color coded red, indicating that that needs attention. So I'll configure that. And you can set up um, stages um, to remove the supports, um, which can which can affect the, uh, the distortion of the part. But what I'm going to do is just I'm going to put them all in for, for immediate removal there. So you can see the build stages of the part. So build it, release from the base plate and then remove the supports. OK, so they're all white, so I can move onward with that as well. Um, working my way down, um, the first thing colour coded red is the voxel mesh. So 
voxel meshing means we're going to divide the, the build space up into cubic elements um, determined of a, by a size. And as the analysis runs, it will turn on the appropriate layers of material as it builds up. So where, um, where there is steel, uh, where there would be the steel formed by the printing process, those elements are turned on. Um, and then the, the built-in material model simulates the distortion effect from the, the cooling as, as the part cools. So I leave that there at 1.5 and I hit generate mesh. Again, this can be um, a somewhat lengthy process because it's putting quite a lot of elements into the model. So we'll return once that is completed. So the meshing process is finished. Hit OK there, and you can see that is uh, produced a, a cubic uh, voxel mesh on the parts there. So I hit OK to that. Now back into here, the volume mesh is now the next thing up, shown in yellow. So if I go into configure that, um, and that's going to just take the, the defaults there and hit generate mesh. Again, this leads to a, a few minutes of meshing. So we will let that go on and we'll resume once it is completed. OK, so the meshing process is completed. So I hit OK there. Um, and we come back into the analysis. And all it remains to do is configure some of the numerical parameters for the solution. So this is basically uh, where we're configuring uh, parameters relating to the underlying MSC Mark FEA solution that will give us the uh, predictions of residual stress and distortion from the simulation. So by default, it uses parallelization. It can be quite a large mesh. Um, so all I'm going to need to do is change that to Angular. Uh, eight domains suits the number of cores I have on my laptop. So I hit OK to that. Um, hit save again before I run the analysis and then I can press the green arrow to initiate the solution um, and then hit start and Simufacts builds the, the decks for the parallel processing, uh, exports them and then kicks off a mark analysis that runs in the background. As the analysis runs um, Simufacts builds up the post processes building up the layers as we go so we can see the uh, the incremental effect on distortion as it goes the runtime is about 15 20 minutes on this so rather than sit and watch that we will resume once the analysis is completed okay so the simulation has finished and you can see we've got a lovely contour plot of total displacement so uh, it's a total displacement there of 2.34 millimetres. So I can toggle on there to see the intermediate steps of the build, and then we can we can play through to show how the material, both of the part and of the support structures, was built up as time went on. Um, and then when it gets to the full extent of the, the build, it simulates removing the, the base plate and the support structures um, to give you back a, um, a contour plot there of displacement. So we can also look at equivalent stress. So you can see the, the total equivalent stress is, is of sort of the order of 0.04 megapascal, so not anything that you'd be overly concerned about from the perspective of um, affecting the durability life cycle of this part. Um, the way in which you might use this is to try various different orientations of the part within the within the tool, um, within the printing uh, tool, to to see which give you the lowest distortion result, or, or um, isolated the distortion to somewhere that wouldn't affect the actual function of the part. Um, you can also include other um, post-processing operations beyond removing removal of the support structures. You can add in a cycle of heat treatment. Um, you can add in other cycles designed to um, improve the material density, improve the, uh, the overall displacement. So it's um, it's not a, a not a fast process, but it is vastly faster than actually setting one of these machines up and 3D printing one. 
um, with the cost of, of hundreds of pounds in machine time and raw materials to decide which one of four orientations is the best way to produce your part. So I have a, a short video that uh, just compares four different orientations. So you can see it goes through the build here, gradually builds up the parts. And you can see that the, of the of the four orientations, this one here, uh, where the Z build direction is always uppermost, um, the, the lowest total distortion is 1.55 millimeters compared to the, the 2.34 here, which is the worst case. So that gives you a, a quick overview of how uh, Simufact AM can be used to, to shortcut the process of setting up, um, setting up prints of, of 3D parts in metals. Thank you very much.